Hello and welcome to our weekend after Christmas online worship experience here at Calvary. My name is Joe Donahue and I'm the associate pastor here at Calvary. And you may have noticed today looks a little bit different. We're not going to have our normal flow of worship. Instead, you're going to be able to hear from Pastor Chad, from Pastor Chet, and a little bit from myself right now, as well as an amazing time of worship. Now, I hope that you've had an amazing Christmas. And as we look to close out 2020 in just a few days, I hope that all of our 2021s will be much greater than 2020 has been. Saying that 2020 has been a crazy year is an understatement. 2020 has not gone the way any of us hoped or expected that it would. COVID came along and shut down the economy. School systems were closed. Businesses were closed. Parents had to figure out how to work from home and teach their kids with uh, distance learning. And uh, obviously alcohol sales increased exponentially. Stress levels went up across the US and simultaneously the church went virtual. We missed seeing family. We miss seeing one another. Some people have postponed weddings in 2020. Others postponed funerals. It was a strain for everybody. So as we look at the year 2021, I hate to say this, but until the COVID vaccine becomes widespread and proves effective, we will still have some lingering effects of 2020 inside the year 2021. But I want you to hear some words of hope, words that you can build your foundation on for the year 2021, words that you can cling to, and maybe even words that you will choose to memorize. Listen to the words that Paul wrote in Romans 5. Romans 5, 1 through 6. Therefore, since we have been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. Because of our faith, Christ has brought us into this place of undeserved privilege where we now stand and we confidently and joyfully look forward to sharing God's glory. We can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials for we know that they help us develop endurance and endurance develops strength of character. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. And this hope will not lead to disappointment. For we know how dearly God loves us because he has given us the Holy Spirit to fill our hearts with his love. When we were utterly helpless, Christ came at just the right time and died for us sinners. I hope you hear those encouraging words that Paul wrote. Did you catch it? Because of what Jesus has done, we have peace with God. Because of what Jesus has done, we stand in place of undeserved privilege. Because of what Jesus has done, we have confident and joyful hope and look forward to sharing God's glory. Because of what Jesus has done, we can rejoice even if or even when we run into various trials in 2021, because those trials will help us develop endurance and endurance will help develop our character and character will strengthen our confident hope of salvation. And this type of hope is not gonna lead to disappointment. Regardless of what we experience in 2021, if you are a follower of Jesus, you can walk through 2021 with your arms lifted high in victory because hope does not disappoint. I hope that you have an amazing, blessed 2021 and celebrate all that Jesus has done for you. Hello, hello, hello. Hope you and your family had a great time of gift exchange, good food to eat, and overall just a Merry Christmas. I'm Chet Anderson. I have the privilege of serving as your executive pastor here at Calvary. And the next big holiday that's coming up is New Year's Eve 
and New Year's Day. And most of the time when we talk about New Year's, we talk about making resolutions. And many of us are going to make a resolution. Mine this year will be to increase. You see, Luke 2.52 says, And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and favor with God and man. You know, by studying God's word daily and allowing the Holy Spirit to help me know how to apply that knowledge that he gave me and that he's teaching me, I will be able to grow in wisdom. Man, that's awesome. I also want to increase in a godly reputation by making choices that lead others to a life-changing relationship with Jesus. You see, having a good reputation in your community helps us solidify the fact that we are followers of Jesus Christ. And my resolution is to continue to study God's word so that I can achieve the goals that God has set for me. Hopefully, you'll join me in making a New Year's resolution to increase this year, first and foremost with God and then with man. Will you join me to increase in 2021? God bless you. Father, thanks for loving us. Thanks for giving us an opportunity to serve you. Help us to meet the goals that you've set before us. In Jesus' strong name we pray, amen. Hey, Calvary. Welcome to the weekend between Christmas and New Year's. I mean, it's a time of travel. It's a time of family get-togethers. Uh, and it's also a time where people kind of reflect on the past year and maybe make some plans for the coming year. And I know some of you cannot wait to say goodbye to 2020. Uh, I know. I see the memes on social media about, hey, I'm staying up to, uh, uh, till midnight on New Year's Eve, not so I can welcome in the new year, but so I can make sure 2020 leaves. Uh, I get that because this past year has been many things. I mean, it's been surprising. It's been disappointing. It's been frustrating. It's been painful. But it's also contained victories, celebrations, achievements, joys that have filled our lives. So today, instead of dismissing 2020 as a lost year, a tragic year, or a failed year, I want to offer us a redeemed perspective. I'm going to refer to a story in Genesis chapter 50. Actually, the story kind of encompasses chapters 37 through 50. I want to look at the life of Old Testament Joseph. And especially one thing he said at the very end of his life. Now, if you're not familiar with the different Josephs in the Bible, there's three prominent Josephs. Uh, we just celebrated one of them, right? Uh, Christmas Joseph, uh, he's found in uh, the Gospel of, of Luke and Matthew. And just in the early chapters, he's Jesus' stepfather. You know, think about Mary and Joseph and Jesus lying in the manger, right? So uh, that's Christmas Joseph. And then you've got Easter Joseph, totally different Joseph. We know very little about him other than he was rich and he was from Arimathea. And he's the guy who gave Jesus his tomb when he died. And then there's Old Testament Joseph, which is the, the most extensive account of any Joseph in the Bible. He's found in, his story's found in Genesis 37 through 50. Uh, it's got a lot of detail in it, and he's hugely significant to the whole story of Israel as a nation. So Genesis chapter 50, verse 20, here's what is recorded. This is Joseph talking to his brothers uh, just before uh, the end of his life, uh, but his dad had just passed away. And he says this, as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good to bring it about that many people should be kept alive as they are today. Now, some of you know the story and you know the context. Others of you don't. That's where I want to fill in this blank, uh, these blanks. But uh, I want to give us a little bit of a redeemed perspective. And the first thing from Joseph's story I want you to know is that what man intended for evil, God used for good. What man intended for evil, God used for good. That's what Joseph said to his brothers. See, Joseph saw God's hands in, in the tragedies and disasters of his life. He saw God at work, and God redeemed Joseph's pain in tremendous ways. And by the way, it was serious pain. 
In Genesis 37, we're introduced to Joseph and his family. He's got 10 older brothers. His dad is Jacob, who's one of the patriarchs. And, uh, and, and so uh, Jacob is, uh, excuse me, Joseph is so uh, loved by his brothers that they actually plotted to kill him. And then instead of killing him, they decided they would sell him into slavery because that was better. He's betrayed by his brothers. And then he's sold into slavery and he's sold to a guy in, in Egypt and he's, he works for this guy and he actually starts managing this guy's uh, household and then he's falsely accused, accused of sexual assault by this guy's wife. And so he's sent to prison. So he's been sold into slavery by his family. He, he served as a slave and gets falsely accused of sexual assault. And now he's in prison. He makes some friends. He helps them out. He interprets their dreams. And he has one request only, and that is, hey, would you guys remember me when you get out? And he's forgotten in prison. So that's in Genesis 37 through 40. You can read all of those different situations in those accounts. So Joseph experienced injustice after injustice. He was betrayed by family, he was unjustly accused by his employer, and he was forgotten by friends. I know some of you can relate to all of those. But here's the thing. Joseph saw the power of God to redeem all of it. He saw God's power to redeem every single betrayal, every single false accusation, every single time he was forgotten. Joseph experienced God's power in his life. I just want you to know, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, if you believe that Jesus is the one and only Son of God and Savior of the world, and you believe that he died on the cross to pay for your sins, and he was raised from the dead, and you have made a commitment to follow Jesus with your life, then I want you to know that God promises to redeem your life. That's what he's doing. He's redeeming your life. The, 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 the tragedies the betrayals, the rejections, all of it God is redeeming. I want you to know that what people intend for evil, God redeems for good. That's the first thing I want you to see in this story. The second is simply this. God blessed Joseph in the struggles and God used Joseph to bless the nations. Okay? God blessed Joseph in the midst of the struggles and God used Joseph to bless the nations. So just to summarize Joseph's story, every place he landed, in slavery and, and in prison, and then beyond that, God showed up and blessed him. And, and eventually, miraculously, God elevated Joseph to a place of leadership where he was second in command of the most powerful nation on the face of the earth at the time. He was the second highest ranked person in Egypt right behind Pharaoh or the king. And God did that so that Joseph could preserve thousands upon thousands of lives, including his very own family of origin. His brothers, his brother's families, but also his parents, his sister, uh, and his little brother too. All of that. Can I just remind you, as a follower of Jesus, if life is a struggle, if 2020 has been a hard and harsh year for you, God is with you in those struggles. He has not abandoned you. He has not forgotten you. God is with you, and God is blessing you in the midst of those struggles. I just want to encourage you to see that, okay? Uh, God has offered you his presence. He's made the promise he will never leave you or forsake you. God has offered you his peace. Jesus spoke to his disciples and said, these things I have taught you so that in me you may have peace. In the world, you will have tribulation. You will have struggles. But take courage, for I have overcome the world. God, God offers us his power. The Apostle Paul reminds us in 2 Timothy 1 that we have not been given a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and love and discipline. And God offers us hope. The hope of eternal life. That because of Jesus' death and resurrection, because our sins have been forgiven, we have the promise of a life that is better, a life that is victorious. In fact, the Apostle Paul said, I do not consider these present sufferings worth comparing to the glory that will be revealed in us in Christ Jesus. What an amazing promise. God is blessing you right now in your life. And, and I just, I pray that you can see it. I pray that you're aware of it. And so not only is God 
you know, blessing you in the midst of the struggles, but God wants to use you to impact many people. And, and, and God desires to use your life to bless others, and many of you are doing just that. You're doing it personally, you're doing it in your families, you're doing it to the people around you, you're also doing it through the ministry of Calvary. You see, you're inviting your friends to church, whether it's on-site or online. Of course, this weekend's online only. But you're inviting them, and we know you're inviting them because we've been celebrating baptism after baptism after baptism as people are confessing their faith in Jesus Christ. In fact, in 2020, we celebrated over 215 baptisms as a church. That's amazing, especially in 2020. Uh, you know, you're, you, God's using you through your generosity to bless others, thousands upon thousands of people. Do you, do you realize we just finished up the Christmas season where we delivered hundreds of backpacks to children to bless them in Jesus' name? You, you sent presents to dozens of angel tree kids. We have you have constructed over 60 wells in Mozambique, 60 fresh water drinking wells that provide clean water, get this, for about 45,000 people a day. You're blessing them. You're blessing thousands of people every single day through your generosity. You're, we're, as a church, we're sponsoring hundreds of children of compassion. We've built a compassion center in Honduras, and we're sponsoring kids there uh, in the hundreds, and, and you're allowing them to have food enough and education and health care uh, to elevate them out of extreme poverty. You see, you are blessing people. We're blessing the nations, and, and God is using us to do that through our struggles. So please understand, God is blessing you in the midst of your struggles, and God wants to use you to bless others. Finally, I want you to see, and this is so crucial for 2021, I want you to see that Joseph praised God and he forgave his brothers. What you intended for evil, God intended for good, that, that many people would be kept alive. Joseph praised God. Uh, see, what happened is this. Joseph had already forgiven his brothers when they had come to, uh, to get food in Egypt, and Joseph gave it to them. And when he could have exacted revenge on them, he, he forgave them. But they kind of thought that maybe that was because dad was still alive. And, and in chapter 50, Jacob, their dad, had finally passed away, and the brothers figured, okay, now it's payback time. Now Joseph's going to get even with us. And they came to him, and they begged for mercy. And that's when Joseph said, what you intended for evil, God intended for good. You wanted to betray me, you wanted to hurt me, but God used that to save thousands upon thousands of lives, including the life of our family. Uh, Joseph praised God for his redeeming power, even through the pain, and Joseph forgave his brothers. Uh, that is an amazing example of our lives and how we want to close out 2020 and how we want to begin 2021. Can I show you, this, this is my goal. This is how I want us to close out 2020 and begin 2021 to do these two things. First of all, to praise God. To praise God. To praise God excitedly, to praise God continually, to praise God privately, to praise God publicly. In fact, here's your assignment. If you're watching this with your family, as soon as this uh, service is over, I want, I want to encourage you to take some time and, and just to have kind of like a praise-a-thon in your family. Just kind of go around your family and, and say, hey, what are you praising God for? What are you thankful to God for? And just see how long you can go. Make it a game so you can keep praising God longer than everybody else. If you're watching this alone, get out a piece of paper and write down and see how many pages you can fill up just saying, I praise God for this. See how many names you can write down of people you're thankful for? How many, you know, events in your life you can look back and see God redeeming? Praise God. As long as God gives you life, let his praise be on your lips. It's life-changing. It's amazingly powerful and bringing joy into our lives. So first thing I want to encourage you to do is praise God. Second thing I want to encourage you to do is to forgive. To forgive. The Apostle Paul in Ephesians chapter 4 says, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. You know, in Christ, God forgave us of all our sins. All of them. There's not one that's held against us. We are completely and totally forgiven by God's grace. 
So you have been forgiven. So forgive. Forgive others. Forgive those who have wronged you, who have hurt you, who have betrayed you. Look, if you forgive them, it will heal your soul. When you hold on to that anger, when you hold on to that resentment, it's like you drinking poison and hoping that they're going to die. It doesn't help you at all. It just hurts you more. When you forgive, see, forgiveness is for you more than it's for them because when you forgive, God cleanses our soul of all that junk that we're holding against other people. Forgive. Forgive others, but also forgive yourself. Forgive yourself for your blunders, for your idiocies, for your failures, even for your rebellions. Forgive yourself. You see, all of us need grace. Every one of us. It's one of our essential beliefs here at Calvary. All people are sinners and need the grace of God. I need the grace of God. You need the grace of God. Uh, and here's the thing. We need God's grace. None of us deserve it. And yet Jesus offers it to us freely. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So accept God's grace. Forgive yourself and live in the joy and freedom of Jesus. So forgive others, forgive yourself. Some of you even need to forgive God. Now, God hasn't done anything to wrong you. It's impossible for him to sin. So he hasn't done anything to wrong you, but some of you are angry at God. You're just holding a grudge against God, and you're angry because of loss, because of pain, because God didn't answer your prayer for your children or for your loved ones. Uh, and, and you're grieving their loss and you're holding that against God because he didn't heal the disease, he didn't prevent the accident, he didn't restore your family. And I understand. But can I just encourage you to go ahead and tell God you're angry? Just confess it. He'll meet you there. Grace and mercy are waiting for you. And again, it's gonna heal your heart and set you free and, and give you joy in your life that... Uh, that is missing right now if you're holding that anger against God. So that's what Joseph did. He praised God and he forgave. And my prayer for you as we leave 2020, as we step into 2021, is that you will praise God and you will keep forgiving. Because if you do that, then 2021, no matter what comes our way, is gonna be a blessed year. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. But we thank you for loving us first and loving us best by sending your son to be our savior, to be the sacrifice for our sins. And we praise you for your goodness and your grace. God, we so desperately need your grace. I pray that it would, it would just flow to everybody who's watching. You, you'd fill our lives with your mercy so much so that it overflows to the people around us, to the people who've wronged us. And God, we can be like Joseph and recognize that you are redeeming our our, our tragedies, you're redeeming our pain, you're redeeming our failures, and you're doing that so that we can be a blessing to this world. Beginning in our homes and extending out to the ends of the earth, you just want to use us to bless others. But we can't get there unless we praise you and unless we accept and give that grace and mercy. So Father, thanks for loving us when we don't deserve it. Thanks for the promise of, of heaven when we deserve hell. Thanks for being our Savior and including us in your kingdom. And we thank you for 2020 and all of the crazy pain and loss and sorrow and joy and victories and celebrations that were wrapped up in it. And we commit 2021 to you. In Jesus' name, amen.